Good morning. Good morning. Our upload speeds are being temperamental this morning. So I was, was going to say good morning, I hope. Yeah, right. Hopefully it's not pixelated. Yes. Um, how was your workout? Workout was good. Yeah? Yeah, I did um, shoulders and okay. triceps. Oh, you can hold turn on. the volume down. I'll tell you, I feel it. That. There we go. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Um, so I did shoulders, triceps, calves, and that would be it. Okay. Oh, no, 10 minute uh, cardio plus. Oh, you did your cardio? Which I did yesterday. For some reason, I keep forgetting that, but yes. So that was a good work. I How's that going? It's going good. I did it three days in a row. I probably won't do it tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, plus, tomorrow's leg day. Ah, so. uh, yeah. yeah. I did cardio today. Yes, you did. You were up there riding around. Yep, I rode. I rode for ten about ten and a half miles. Yeah. So a very hilly course. Because they tried to freeze you out there for a while. They did. So they had there's a vent in the ceiling that they goes to the outside, right. and they had it open. And I asked, I'm like, why are we pumping 25 degree air into the gym? And they're like, oh, we don't want it to get stale in here. <sighs> we'll freeze you out. Oh, but, but, you it know. was so cold. Right. I'm crazy. But whatever. The logic in that place sometimes just, just is beyond me. Yeah, yeah. But it was fine. I rode. I did my thing. So that was good. Yeah. Um, do you want to go first talking about flaxseed? Um, Russ has the How Not to Die book out here. He's right. So about we've already showed you, and this, and this book is available on our website um, on the resources page. And it's a great book. talks about the 15 most common causes of deaths and, you know, as it says, how not to die from these diseases. Um, so, and then in the back of the book, it just talks about all sorts of nutrients and, and, you know, whole food plant-based stuff that you can do to make it healthier. So with that, um, I read a part about flaxseed last night and flaxseed is, is a superfood. Which is why I constantly am dumping it in Russ's oil. Right. He's like, hey, you're going to eat it. You're going to like it. <laughs> um, this one talks about hypertension in flaxseed and then how it is basically uh, lowered both the, um, I don't know. Let me see if I can find it. What's the exact? Is the systolic? Is that what it is? You, do you know that, babe? No. Um, anyway, you know, the, the two measurements in your blood pressure, the, the top number and the bottom number, uh, by 15 and 7% respectively. Uh, and then people's, I mean, 15 and 7 points respectively. And then a lot of people say, well, what's the big deal about that? It's a huge deal when you consider that the drugs out there um, go anywhere from like 7 to 3% or 5 to 2% is what the drugs will do with the side effects. Um, so they're, they're basically saying that flaxseed has been proven and they did double blind testing. And then they say, well, how can you do blood? Double blind testing with flaxseed. People will know if they're eating flaxseed. And they discovered ways to they put it in. They give them sawdust instead. <laughs> well, they're, they're typically with them, you know. I'm kidding, they don't. They don't, but what they did is they mixed things like peanut butter and other stuff that uh, mimicked the texture and the taste of flaxseed. Yeah. And they did they did double blind testing and then you know this isn't uh, how much does it say you're supposed to get a day? Um so it doesn't really talk to that. I think on his on uh, so this book is by Dr. Gregor and on his Daily Dozen, which is an app that he has, it's I think he says a tablespoon of flaxseed. A I day. think this says I think it was in here, I think it said one to two tablespoons. Yeah. So, um, and we buy ours, uh, the whole flaxseed and we grind it. We just have a coffee grinder that we grind it in. Um, you can buy it ground, but because of the oil and flaxseed, it, it will go rancid pretty quickly. Right. I think it'll keep for like three months or something right. in the fridge, a little longer in the freezer, but we buy ours whole and then, um, grind it. Grind it. Right. Although we may start grinding a, a certain amount of it and keep it ready to go. Russ, Russ tells, I, says I need to grind more of it at a time so that it's available so I don't right. have to grind it every single time. Right. Exactly. So uh, that's what I got. I also read some stuff about um, hibiscus tea and hypertension. Um, and that's also a miracle type thing. Um, uh, the two, the uh, couple of things in here, and I'm just briefly going to tell you this because I don't have the details. Um, but basically, there's, there's, there's a, a substance in hibiscus tea that where if you drink like gallons of it a day, it could be a problem. They recommend not to drink over a quart a day. That's a lot of tea. That's a lot of tea. And basically, the study's done on basically anywhere from two to three cups of tea a day. And um, that hypertension has been, uh, it's been shown to um, alleviate some of the symptoms of hypertension. We'll have to see if we can get some We don't have tea. hibiscus tea yet, yeah. so we'll have to start looking into that. Yeah, absolutely. And we also don't have hypertension, but still. <laughs> It's good to have it anyway. But, and again, that's from um, Dr. Gregor's book, How Not to Die, available on rnrjourney.com. Through Amazon. Through Amazon. Exactly. Yeah, so you can get find it on our resource page. 
Um, and since I finished all of my classwork and, and that I was doing, I was able to go back to reading. I told you guys I was reading the starch, um, starch solution book. Ah, uh, yeah, can't, you, you can't mix it, I don't think. <coughs> but it'll, you should try it though, I bet it would be yummy. Right. So um, I went back to reading the starch solution, <coughs> so I've been working on that again, and so I have a few in interesting little tidbits I wanted to share with you from that. One is that, this I thought this was interesting, your body only uses 3% of the calories you consume to move dairy, meat, nuts, oil, and other fatty foods from your fork to your body fat. Mm. That to me, you know, I, have you ever thought about it? I, I look, it's so funny. I've, I've said, you know, you eat three ounces of something and you gain two pounds. How is that possible? How can your body create more weight out of food than what actually existed? But that's what it does. So, and because it only uses 3% of the calories, it's very efficient at moving um, fats and proteins into body fat. And we've talked about how it doesn't move carbs. It's not efficient at all at turning carbs into body fat. And yet we blame carbs for being fat. Yes. That's such a yeah. weird misnomer for me that the science says very clearly that our bodies don't turn carbs into fat. It turns carbs into glycogen. And yet somewhere along the way, we've decided that we're going to blame right. carbs um, for, being, for being fat. Right. right. But so anything you eat that has fat and protein in it, which he says very specifically, dairy, meat, nut, nuts, oils, and fatty foods, your body's going to turn into fat. Now, we talked about nuts uh, yesterday. Is that yeah, what we talked yes, about we nuts? Did. And we talked about how, you know, if you're at a, a healthy weight and you're not trying to lose weight, nuts are a really good source of right. healthy fats and protein, protein and yes. what your body needs. They're, they're great. Not in like, you don't want to eat pounds of them at a time, right. but they're good for you. But if you're trying to lose weight, or um, you have other issues related to fat in your blood, such as um, heart disease and diabetes. Have to think about that a minute. Heart disease and diabetes. Then you're going to want to stay away from nuts as well. The seeds too. As some of the um, yeah. other animal, uh, the animal fat products. But he talked about, and we. This has really happened for us that you have to start looking at a lot of the standard American diet as not food. Right. Because. Otherwise, you're going to be like, oh, I want to eat that because you'll feel like it's food. But if you start looking at it as not food, then it becomes a non-issue. And I think we've definitely gotten to that place. Yeah, I mean, what was I making a comment? Where were we? And I was looking at it, and I said, boy, it looks like it's just not very good. I mean, it just looks like it's not food. What did I say that about? I don't know. I don't, I don't know remember. where we were. Yeah. But it, it's interesting how as you move toward eating more plants, your, your attitude about food changes. And we've definitely seen that when it comes to um, in, the, in restaurants mm. and when other people talk about food commercials, right, right, that kind of thing. Right. Are you yeah. running, running into that in the meat department? <laughs> yeah. So, and, and, and I think we've talked about this, Bridget, in the past where, um, and again, I'm not sure which documentary it was. Oh, it might have been in Defense of Food where we talked about when you go into the supermarket, you want to stay on the fringes because that's where the food is. All the center aisles, that's not food. Stay away from that. Just stuff. stay in the produce yeah. section yeah. and the spices. Right, exactly. Yeah. We, just, we recently bought some Swiss chard, so I have to figure out how to, how to make that. I've right. never made Swiss chard, right. so I'm right. going to be looking for recipes for that. Yeah. Um, and stay away from the slice, the deli department. The oh, yeah. If, if nothing stuff. else, remove oh. that stuff from your diet. Right. Because anything in the deli department is going to have not only the animal the, products in it, the but the then it has nitrates, and, and yeah. it's just not... It's pr really processed, so that's yep. definitely not food. Um, so he also makes the point in, and this is again McGregor, Dr. McGregor in the, um, not McGregor, no, McDougal, McDougal, sorry, <laughs> McDougal um, in the starch solution. He talks about how trying to cut down um, on fried foods and high fat and dairy is, is like slow torture, that he feels like it's much better to just say you're not going to eat it um, I don't know. We've said before he can be really aggressive yeah. about how he expects people to change. For me, I'm happy if you're if you're cutting down. If you're eating it three times a week now and you go to once a week right. and you add some plants instead, I'm going to be ecstatic. Right, exactly. So um, I think people have to do what works for them to move themselves down right. the path of happiness and ha not happiness, health. Right. And then toward health, happiness. Which leads to happiness. Right. Exactly. Because We've talked about the difference between pleasure and happiness. Pleasure is short-term, happiness is long-term, and health leads to happiness. Mm -hmm. So 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and we've said it before. Start with one meal one day. Right. Let's all go for meatless Monday. I like that one. That that's and we saw heard it again last night. Yeah. Um, Bridge, you have to share the recipe. I yeah. love I love burrito bowls. So definitely share the recipe with us. I, I make my own, but if you have one that's that's good, I'm I'm game for that right. for sure. Yes, absolutely. Um, the other thing that he talked about was that as a culture, we've really accepted that heart disease, cancer, and diabetes are just accepted. Like right. they just happen and it just is. And it's so strange how those diseases, which don't have to be diseases, are normal. And we, we feel bad for people when we get when they get them, but we don't do anything to stop it. Right even though we know. And I posted a thing this morning, if you're friends with me on Facebook, you probably saw it where I post that Big Pharma says, take this pill, it might address this symptom, it'll mm -hmm. give you five other symptoms, and oh, by the way, there's a side effect, it might kill you. And people are like, okay, that's cool. Right. I say, eat more plants, it'll address a bunch of your symptoms, it won't give you any negative side effects. And oh, by the way, the, side, the only side effect you will get is good health, and people say that's crazy. Yes. And so yeah. it, the disconnect that right. disease and the disease state is mm -hmm. normal is really, it's, it's strange for me. Even as a psychologist, it's strange for me. Yeah. It's, well, I mean, we watch the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Look at all the commercials in there about food, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you watch sports, you watch um, any TV at all, you know, and we don't watch a lot of TV, so it's hard for me to point out specific references. Um, but it's all about food. And, and when we do, we notice that the food they show is all animal products. There's never any vegetables. Animal products in a bun. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's about what or it comes down to. Or taco shell. Right, or taco shell. And, and it's just, I mean, you can search and you can find, I mean, they'll have like five things there, and one of them will have lettuce sticking out. <laughs> you know? And then it's, it's iceberg lettuce on top of that, which is, you know, It's pretty useless. Pretty food. useless, right? Really. Yeah. But, and this is a direct quote from McDougal. He says, the healthy diet endorsed by doctors and the USDA is actually toxic to humans. Mm. And that I think that's a pretty, a pretty aggressive statement, but I think it's true. Yeah. I think that the way that we've, we've taught ourselves to eat is, is toxic. Right. And I was talking to somebody recently who wants me to help him with his diabetes, but his wife does all of their cooking, and she's been cooking the way she cooks for 40 or right. 50 years. And, and now we're going to say to her, oh, by the way, we want you to completely change the way you think about food. And I get that that's hard. It's very I, hard. I, I get, Absolutely. I remember when we started this and I was like, what are we going to eat? And I yeah. had to start looking for recipes and trying to find things that we could make. And it was a really tough shift to try and figure out, well, what does it look like now? But I think it's a shift that's worth it. It's been worth yeah. it for us and everybody I know that has started moving toward eating more plants and, and having more of a plant-based lifestyle has has come back to me and said, oh my God, I'm so much healthier. I feel so much better. Feel good. I mean, look at that waistline. I mean, come on, people. Seriously. <laughs> That's just awesome. I'm glad you're happy to show <laughs> off. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that that we're not uh -oh. telling you anything you don't know. Oh, It looks like it's trying to pixelate. It's trying to pixelate on us. Hopefully. I told you our upload was being difficult. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we... Um, we're telling you things you already know. Fruits and vegetables are good for you. Your body's really proficient in turning protein and fat into fat that you wear. And that if you eat plants, that won't happen. Right. So not news. <laughs> not news. Not news. But uh, again, as I already said, just start slow if you can. I mean, if you're, listen, if you're the type of person who needs to jump in or not at all, it's like, you know, some people that quit smoking, they have to, you know, rip off the Band-Aid or they have to gradually peel it off. Right. You know, whichever works for you, but um, if working for you means going slow and taking one meal at a time or, you know, um, just taking one product out of your diet, you know, if it's milk, take milk out, or if it's cheese, take cheese out. Cheese, I know, and I understand is a tough one because that was a tough one for us. We like. I actually cheese. posted an article, yes. I think yesterday or two days ago, about why cheese is so addictive, and it, it turns out, this is interesting, at least interesting to me, that... Breast milk, or in this case, cow's milk, which right. is also is just is breast milk from cows, has a substance in it that is designed to um, hit the dopamine receptors in right. in the in in the infant's brain, so the infant wants to come back for more. more. It's a survival thing, makes right? Sense. That makes sense. 
the human human breast milk has, and I can't remember what the measurements were, but the human's breast milk has like 2.5 of whatever that measurement is, and cow's milk has 26 of the <laughs> measurement. So way more, more in the milk. And then when you make cheese out of that milk, it condenses all of that. And so the thing that hits your dopamine receptor in cheese is actually addictive because it's designed to get a, an infant to come back for more food so right. it survives. And then you add a glass of wine with that and you're doing Yeah, forget I mean, about yeah, it. I mean, then it's, then it's, it's yummy. Right. I mean, we, we've sat there on occasion with a you know, glass or two of wine and before we started this. Big hunk of cheese and just said, cut it oh, out. Yeah, we've, between the two of us, eaten easily a pound of cheese. Right. And oh my goodness, my gut hurts even just thinking about right. that. Right, exactly. But it was yummy. Yep, it was. So we get it. So yeah. But... Um, also, I wanted to ask you guys if you feel like, uh, you know, are these in the morning? Is it Are they too long? Should we cover less? Should we try to make them shorter? I know I have a, one friend who told me she listens to them when she um, cleans her house, which is kind of cool, I guess. <laughs> yes, that's right. But, um, you know, let us know how, what would make this easier or better or how, how we can make it more user-friendly for you so that you can get the Even content. if you have a – if you'd like to see it on a different platform. I mean, we're, we're experimenting with that because uh, I have particular fears of Facebook <laughs> – cutting this out at some point, uh -huh. but, um, mm -hmm. you know, so we are, we are thinking about moving it over to the, um, the, on our journey page. Yeah. I don't know. We got to, uh, we're, we're working on it. Yeah. So, you know, any input you want to give us, we're happy to, um, you know, get it and listen to it. And... Yep. Actually, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thanks for your comment, Laura. I will definitely respond. I see your question and I don't know what that word is. I have to, I'll have to look it up to uh, respond intelligently. Yeah. So I'll do that when we get done here. But did you have anything else you wanted to add? I don't. Okay. So eat flaxseed, don't eat cheese. Basically, that's yeah, the summary. Yeah, that's the summary. <laughs> <that. Right. laughs> um, if you're getting value from these, like and share them for us, please. We uh, really appreciate it when you do that. And um, we'll be back tomorrow with something. Right. I don't know what it'll be. It won't be right. a fasting day. I'll be happy about that. Right. Visit our website, rnrjourney.com. It's up. Um, and we're, we're looking for feedback because we're trying to make it great for you folks. So um, you see something you like, let us know. You see something you'd like, you'd like to see other things that aren't there, again, let us know. And I'm working on adding more recipes yes, to the members yes. um, section of it so that members can have more access to the food that right. I make for right. us on a regular basis. And it occurs to me as we were talking this morning on the community page on our website, you're only going to see some copy that says what you could see if you were a member. So I think what I might do is put an image of the actual um, interface that pops up for the because Robin puts a lot of good information on there, and she's looking to interact with people that want to. Uh, it's like our questions. own little private group that doesn't yeah. have Zuckerberg yeah. watching. And us. it's a forum, exactly. It's a forum, <laughs> so um, it, it's for people to post questions, ask questions, answer questions, you know, whatever. Um, Successes, challenges. Right, you'd be able to share recipes yeah. on there. And it's part, it's part of being a member of the R&R &R Journey pages. Right. You get access to that. And we're, we're trying to build a community of you know, experts in different fields and challenges right. people are having. My doctor was the first person to sign up, so exactly. I'm super excited about exactly. that. Exactly. And, and basically, so. we want like-minded people that are looking to get information and share information and help us grow this community of, and be healthy. of healthy people. Yep. And that's, that's the goal. That's our goal. goal. Yes. All right. All right. Awesome. Okay. We have to run to the grocery store. Yes, we got he somebody. Needs, he needs flour so we can make more bread. Right. We have somebody <laughs> coming over for a, a plant-based diet tomorrow on food. Lunch. Lunch tomorrow. So yep. we want to make some fresh bread for them. Um, so with that, we will say uh, eat real food. <laughs> I know. I almost lost it. Let's try again. Eat real food. Not too much. <laughs> Mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great day, we'll guys. see you tomorrow.